Hi, it's Gaz and Sean from Access Monday. This is episode two of Weird About Evidence. Uh, we're here in Cambridge today to interview Julian Huppert. Uh, he is one of our few MPs with a uh, background and a PhD in science. Uh, so, we'll see you in a minute. Um, we better go now because we're surrounded by dangerous cyclists, so we better concentrate on walking, I think. There's one. Okay, so welcome, Julian. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, where we like to start with these is by asking what worries you about MPs who don't understand science? Um, the real risk is people making decisions about things they know very little about. And it's not about being you know, a scientific expert. It's not about being able to lead the world in your own research. It's about understanding the basics of it. What, what is evidence? How does it work? How do you think about these things? And so there are people like, I mean, David Trudinick is somebody I've crossed swords with on a number of occasions uh, on some of these issues. And it, you know, frankly does worry me because he's on the Health Select Committee driving what happens for our nation's health care. Uh, he and I have very different views about how much you should have things that work as part of that mix. Do you think, do you think then that, I suppose, looking at the whole of government, do you think MPs in general are capable of understanding evidence in a sense, or do you think this is a real requirement? Some are, definitely. There's a whole range yeah. that, who, who really are good, and that goes across all the parties, it yeah. goes across a whole range of things. Uh, and some of the people who understand evidence, by the way, I disagree with on the conclusions, and that's not a problem. There's a difference between having somebody who reaches a different answer and somebody who just doesn't get it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're very different things. I, I respect one, I don't respect the other. Uh, there are some of the people who are a bit scared of it all. There's a worrying habit, because I think politicians have realised that evidence is important and useful, but what they tend to do is to reach a conclusion and then look for a figure, a statistic that backs it up. And that's really dangerous. That's not how it works. That's not what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a number of people who go for that as a sort of token effort, and then there are some who just don't care. Yeah. You know, whatever the evidence is, not interested. You know, it's going this way, and there's nothing you could show them. Uh, and those groups are really quite scary at times. Yeah. You know, as I say, people like David Trudinica, I find yeah. quite worrying. We, we just start off in completely different places. Mm. Uh, and it's really quite frightening at times when people find evidence for things which just doesn't hang up, doesn't, doesn't make sense as a reason to do anything. Do you think then that there should be, uh, I suppose, um, I think this question, you were at the House Select Committee with David Nutt on yeah, Tuesday. Absolutely. This was a question asked him, obviously, when it was here, it was to do with the drug policy, but I think it applies across the board. Do you think there should be a statutory requirement that means the government have to follow the advice of scientific counsel? Um, I don't, actually. You don't? Um, the, the reason is that... Scientific analysis can tell you some things. So in the case of drugs policy, where, I mean, I pushed very hard for the Select Committee, Home Affairs Select Committee, to do this piece of work on drugs. Yeah. Personally, I think we need to change the way we do it. I don't mm. think the current approach is sensible at all. Um, but scientific advice can tell you what the risks are of various things. You know? So David Nutt is quite correct to compare the death rate from horse riding to the death rate from ecstasy. You know, that's absolutely yeah. right. That's not the same as saying what the correct laws ought to be. Now, so although I actually agree with him, I wouldn't object to somebody who said, we've heard the evidence, and for the following reasons we have decided to do something different. You know, you can change your conclusions, you just can't change the facts. The problem at the moment is that there's so little regard given that you just get ministers who say, well, I don't like your advice, I'll get somebody else, I'm, I'm going to try and change my facts. You know, the death rate from horse riding is a fact, the death rate from ecstasy is a fact. Yeah. You should work out what to do based on those mm. facts. But not just slavish. I don't, I don't want to see a world where we work out what the right thing to do is by plugging science in, turning a handle <laughs> and the rules come out. Because that's, yeah. that's not how it works. I mean, um, you, you mentioned briefly just then about the idea that we can have a piece of scientific advice and come to different conclusions yep. about it. And sometimes we even have, I suppose, two scientists offering slightly different advice yep. um, based on the facts. But do you think that there's anything where policy is clearly at odds with the science, where it really just isn't based on the facts? Oh, I mean, there, there, there are lots and lots and lots of things like that, where uh, you have, you know, I mean, drugs policy is just the classic example, yeah. um, where what has happened is a whole bunch of people have, have said, you know, no, we're tough. I mean, the session we had David Nutt, we also had the current members of the Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs. One of them said the, I thought, you know, unexceptional comment that it would be quite nice to uh, divert young people away from, from criminal justice. You know, that actually nicking somebody, putting them in jail is probably not the best thing mm -hmm. to do. 
within two hours, the Home Secretary said, no, I'm tough on drugs, we're not doing it. Now, that wasn't that she had listened to the report, analysed it and decided there was some other mm. fact that was important. That was that, no, we don't do it. Don't care. Just completely kind of ignored it. Yeah, and, uh, and, that, and that is a real problem which we need to push through. But it also applies in, in lots of other areas about how do you go about making decisions. But also, broadly, it's not just about scientific advice, it's about having the scientific method, the idea that you can do an experiment. One of the things which really bothers me in uh, politics is how taboo it is to ever change your mind. It actually brings straight to the next question, which is, um, the, I say, I say in science, we, we form a hypothesis test, and if it's wrong, we change our minds. Um, David Blunkett was on BBC Radio 4 earlier this week on Monday, um, speaking again to David N Mark Henderson, uh, and he said that, that politicians only really get two good U-turns in their <laughs> career on a subject. Um, I mean, I know he was laughing about it, but do you think that there is a reluctance to concede on a bad policy in the face of evidence. Yeah, it's, it, it's a really big problem that once a minister has said this is what we plan to do, it's humiliating to have to stop doing it. And, and that's so profoundly wrong. Um, I, mean, I just find it bizarre, you know, Thatcher famously said, you know, the lady's not, you know, about you, she wouldn't do U-turns, Blair said I have no reverse gear. You wouldn't buy a car that didn't have a reverse gear and couldn't do a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> we know that you want to be able to go in different directions. Yeah. and. There is this real penalty at the moment. So once you, you know, to come up with an idea and then say, nah, it doesn't work. You know, now, U-turn, if you say, I really care about civil liberties, and then you run off and say, I don't, you know, actually, no, let's have identity cards on everybody and track everybody, that's yeah. a U-turn because that's changing your principles, your mm. values. But saying, you know, I want to go about doing something this way, okay, this isn't the best way of achieving it. You know? Right. Fine, you know, you try something, not everything works. Um... The first question I asked you was, what worries you about MPs who don't understand science? And this is, I'd also like to ask, what worries you about scientists who don't understand okay. politics? Um, it, I think it's more just disappointing at times in a waste, because one of the things that I find fascinating is I, like most MPs, do constituency surgeries. So um, a couple of hours, you know, almost immediately after this, I'll be sitting for a couple of hours in the city centre in the Guildhall. Mm. People come to see about anything else to talk yeah. about. Most of that is people who want help with something. Very rarely it's somebody who has a policy thing they want to talk about who says, I'm concerned about this, can I talk to you about it? Mm. I think there's a great opportunity for those who care about science to go and see their MPs. Because some MPs are a bit rubbish. Some already know stuff in some areas. Most are sort of fairly open books. Mm. One of the things which I'd say, and in fact Mark Henderson's Geek Manifesto is really, really good and mm. talks quite a bit about this, is go and talk to politicians. If you think, you know, this idiot is talking about the following thing, whether it's homeopathy, whether it's, you know, actor and, and online individual, whatever it is, go and talk to them. Educate them. Have, have a nice conversation, not a rant, yeah. but an actual chat. And you'll find that a number of people go, oh, yeah, mm, that's quite interesting. I hadn't thought of it before. Because we're all busy trying to do everything. You know, there's a huge amount of things going on. If I'm really honest, none of us can actually understand and be on top of all of it. Mm. So a short conversation can actually be really, really useful. So scientists should try and get involved with their MPs. Mm. Um, but then also people who care about this should make sure it matters when they vote. Yeah. If you let your MPs know, if all MPs knew that saying technically daft things would cost votes, people would be a bit more careful not to say technically daft things. Yeah, and again, it's different. Technically, daft is different from you disagree with it. Mm. But you know, if people knew that actually whether somebody was being sensible or not mattered as well, yeah. then they try on that as well. Mm. Would you like to see more scientists taking up politics themselves? Uh, as you have. Yes. Yeah, I would. Uh, we've lost quite a few at the last elections. There are a number who left. You know, Ian Gibson, Evan Harris, and so forth. Uh, not very voluntarily in most of those cases. Um, and it would be good to have more because it used to be the Parliament was full of lawyers. And that has its good points, has its bad mm -hmm. points. We've actually seen fewer lawyers as well as uh, not very many scientists recently. What we have is a huge rise of people who are either professional politicians or they're in PR, media, advertising mm. type backgrounds. Uh, and that's really different because that's all about selling the image of something. If you're a scientist or an engineer, you're tested much more on, you know, does the bridge that you built stand up? As opposed to, can you persuade people that it looks quite good? Um, and that if we could just shift politics over a bit more to testing, does this work, rather than can we persuade people it works? Yeah. I think we actually get better policies. You know, it would be better for the country to have a shift towards that direction.